Hey, this is Bjorn from Cujo Sound, and this is the third part of the workshop we're working on. Working with Max always results in a lot of new experiences and problems and so many other things. Um, and one of the things which is really important when working with Max is how to, um, to make everything run more efficiently. And maybe as some of you have noticed, some of these keys up here when tapping on the keyboard might get stuck when using the MIDI in uh, object as I put in there was in, in, in the first part and the cell object here to, to choose which ones to come in and we that's not a good thing because the whole point of the tool will be not having to touch the computer all the time and having to manually reset these the whole point is that basically the computer is to be standing right next to you and all you got to do is look at it and not touch it you got to work with whatever controller you're using so we're gonna fix that luckily for us there is a different object than the MIDI in which offers almost the same thing but just not everything chunked into one huge line of code it's it's more like defined which part of the MIDI code you want and this one the first one we were going to use is note in what comes in of note in, you can ch see in just a second. Here comes the pitch and the velocity and the MIDI channel. The MIDI channel we're not going to use. It's just the pitch and the, and the velocity. So over here, basically, it's the same thing. If we use this cell object here, moving this over here, it's this one. So we got note in, and we're just going to reset this. Now, it still works, but I can basically tap it as much as I want now, and they won't be stuck. One reason for this is that the node in object just doesn't use as much power as the MIDI in. Node in is not expecting as many messages as MIDI in is. It's only using node on, node off, and those, those kinds of messages. So it all comes out through this one. And we're not going to use the velocity either, so it's just, it's only, it's only these pitch values. Now, as we talked about in, in previous episodes, you could see that if you use this, the MIDI in, and turned whatever MIDI controller value you wanted. Now, you see, I'm turning different knobs here, and it's, it's, it's different controller number, but it's, it's the value which you see here. And, and we don't want that. We want it to be chunked up into specific parts where we want it to be very much. We want it to be much more specific. We want the controller numbers to come out. And uh, one way to do this is to make a another object called CTL in means controller in. And as you can see here, it's the controller value and it says the controller number. And the MIDI channel, still we're not going to use the MIDI channel. It's not that important for us right now. Um, the controller number, let's say if we, if we had, just press I, you get this number box. And we sent the controller value there and the controller number there. If I turn knob number one, this should be controller number one and then some value. You can see that. And now second, works pretty well. Now, we'd like these to be to be sent to whatever object we want, and one way to do it is to delete this one, and then after you name the object, you just write, let's say, one. So one of the outputs disappear, and suddenly it's only the controller value. So this is controller number one, controller value. So if I turn knob number two, nothing happens. But if I turn knob number one, it's going to change. It's going to work. That works fine. The only thing is that on the node modular, as we're working on here, it has 18 controllers. And 18 controllers, that means objects, each with a specific number. So we're going to have 18 boxes, one each named after a specific number. Um, and that's going to cause a lot of wiring and a lot of trouble in making making sense when you're checking it out later, especially for debugging. It's a big problem. So we're going to solve that as well. Attaching a print object is a great tool for debugging. And 
as you can see here it's controller and it's controller number one if we just want raw messages to go through here and it's gonna all gonna it's all going to be printed here so controller values now when I turn a knob goes over here this is just the value this is knob number one this is knob number two and we can't really tell the difference unless we also send the controller number to it if we do that we're gonna get two numbers the number of the controller and the value of it now those are chunked up into two lines of code which ain't really good for us and because we don't want as we spoke of before 18 different objects we just want one object and we need to be able to interpret what comes out and we need to be able to interpret that that whatever number controller number the value of this one is to be sent to a specific part of the patch so we can do that we can pack things together by making an object called pack and to make it easy me easier for max to understand what is actually going to come in we can write zero zero so that it knows that it's two integer values that are going to come into this so if we delete this print object and send the controller value to element number two and the controller number to element number one good so we make a print object to see what is now coming out of this if I turn a number uh, knob now you can see it's changed into one line of code it's the first number is what comes in of inlet number one and the second number is what it, what's in inlet number two so now this is controller two this is controller three now they're all named specifically the controller number and then the value which is really useful because now we can make a object called root and we can name different values so if the value of any line of code starts with a one or a two or a three or a four it's gonna send it out of each of these so if the input matches it, if the input matches one it's gonna come out of in uh, outlet one and two and three and four and so on and and out of the last one if it doesn't match anything but it only sends out the number that came after the initial number the first number so instead of having this it's almost like this select object but it's not the same thing it's like same same but different so we're gonna send in everything that comes out of pack put in a couple of integer but integer boxes here so whenever I'm turning knob number one or two or three or four it should be in each individual box yeah, this is knob number one, knob number two, number three, and number four. So now we have full control of what comes in through the Nord modular, through the node in object and the control in object. And we have split everything up. So whenever we touch something now, we can make it control whatever we want. And we're going to work on with that further on.